So what's going on guys, Kate is here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the top 3 best new meta builds after all the nerfs for PvP and PvE in New World. So for each and every single build I will explain what attributes and perks you want to have, then what gems and specific gear you want to use to get out of your stats as much damage as possible. Then as well I will show you the best gameplay of me using different weapons so you would know which abilities you want to use first on your enemies and much more. So then moving over to the first build, which is the one and only bow and rapier, and these are the attributes you want to have. So no matter from which level you start using this build, you first of all want to get your dexterity to 200, and then get 50 points in constitution, and then continue putting everything else in dexterity, and around level 60 you should have 400 dexterity and 50 constitution. And lastly for all of your gear, you want to go with the light category, and the best setup is to have medium chest piece and then the rest light equipment. And later in the video I will explain more about these 450 points and how we get them but basically we get around 200 points from reaching level 60 and then the other 250 points we get from 550 to 600 item score gear which for any build and class is very easy and cheap to get especially at this stage of the game but if you haven't reached this point yet then don't worry and follow my previous instructions so then taking a closer look at the first weapon which is the bow and these are the weapon masteries you want to have so first things first you want to unlock the first ability called the evade shot and then get these three perks then afterwards get the second ability called the poison shot and then get these three perks then from here let's move over to the other side and unlock the last third ability called the penetrating shot and then get these four perks and that's it now from this point and onwards you're full free to pick and choose which perks you want to unlock next so then let's go over to the second weapon which is the rapier and these are the weapon masteries you want to have so first of all you want to unlock right up from the start both these two abilities is called the evade and repost and then afterwards unlock both these two perks then lastly get the third ability called the fleech and then these three perks as well and now let's take a closer look at the left side and get these two perks and now from this point you're for free to spend your points in whatever order you want okay so now let's go over to the gameplay where i'll show you the best way to play this build so we have the bow and the q spell aka the poison shot gives you the ability to shoot an arrow and when it reaches a target the arrow will explode and create a poison smoke and enemy standing in that smoke will be taking damage every second then the second ability is called the penetrating shot which deals a lot of damage and the arrow itself can go through multiple players which makes the spell very useful in pve and 50v50 wars and lastly our third ability is called the evade shot which when using makes your character leap back five meters so then moving over to the second weapon which is the rapier and the first q spell is called the evade which by activating makes you invulnerable for a split second and it can be good in dodging enemy attacks but you have to know how to use it so then we have the second ability called the repost and it is a reflect which means that when you activate and if an enemy hits you you will reflect the incoming damage from you to him so if he does an f ability on you instead of you getting hit he will hit himself and lastly we have the fleech ability which deals damage and provides a small but nice mobility slash dash spell okay so the best way to attack a player is at the start always try to have a distance between you and the enemy so no matter if you're farming mobs in pve or doing solo or group pvp the same principle and rules apply so from distance you want to use the bow and the way i like to do it is shoot one normal attack and then shoot the penetrating shot and then use the poison shot and by doing this we will poison the enemy and make him take damage every second then from here always try to keep on using your dodge rolls and swapping your weapon and this will activate your perks on the bow giving you the ability to get hate and damage increase so for as long as you can try to keep your distance and use the bow but when the enemy comes close to you or you to him switch to the rapier and use the repost ability and reflect the next incoming attack then i usually spam the evade ability as its cooldown is very short and it will give you a small cooldown reduction and then switch to the bow and by using the evade shot and normal attacks you should be able to finish off the enemy my biggest main point that i want you to understand is to use the bow for range attacks and for close distance fighting use the rapier and keep on using normal attacks plus the abilities both weapons are very high damage and rapier is meant more for spamming left clicks while the bow will take more time to practice aiming and then last thing i want you to practice is the dodge rolling and swapping your weapons back and forth so it's very simple you 
normally run then dodge once before the animation ends you want to swap your weapons so then without the animation you can dodge twice and swap your weapons and this will give you more crit chance and just general movement speed. This one dodge and swapping from bow to rapier and then back to bow will give you nice speed boosts which you can use just normally to run around the map a lot faster or in pvp and pve you can create more distance and make yourself a very hard target to catch. So now for my last and final conclusions for this build. This bow and rapier weapon combination right now is super strong and I have seen this build used by the top 1 highest damage players in wars and pvp. Then of course you have to consider that to play this build it will be a lot harder and take more time to practice aiming, especially at moving targets, because it may seem easy to hit a standing target but in reality it's actually quite hard. So then last but not the least for the bow and rapier you want to use the opal gem and then for all of your gear use the enix gems. So in a quick summary, if you are a solo player or group player and you want to do top 1 damage on leaderboards or you just enjoy bows for pvp or pve then this is the build for you, so enjoy! So then moving over to the second build which is the best hybrid healer slash dps build and for the weapons we want to use the void gauntlet and live staff and these are the attributes you want to have. So first things first if you start from level 0 you want to get your focus to 150 and then start building your constitution and around level 60 you should have 300 focus and 150 constitution and lastly for your gear you want to go with the medium category and the best gear setup is to have heavy helmet, heavy chest armor, medium gloves, light light pants and medium boots and this will give you 22.9 kilogram weight which is exactly just below the heavy weight category. So then moving over to the first weapon which is the void gauntlet and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock both these two perks and then get the first ability called the oblivion and then get these two perks. Then afterwards unlock the second ability called the petrifying scream and then get these two perks as well. And now let's move over to the other side and get the last third ability called the orb of decay and then get these three perks as well and that's it now from this moment you can unlock all the other perks in whatever way you like so then let's go over to the second weapon which is the live staff and these are the weapon masteries you want to have so first of all you want to unlock this perk and then get the first ability called the sacred ground and then afterwards unlock all these five perks then now let's go over to the other side and unlock this one perk and then the second ability called the beacon and then get these two perks then lastly unlock the last third ability called the lights embrace and then then get these two perks. And now from this point you are for free to spend your points in whatever order you want. Ok so now let's go over to the gameplay where I will show you the best way to play this build. So first of all for the void gauntlet we have the first Q spell called the oblivion which creates a circle around you and your teammates inside the circle will get 20% damage increase. But on the other hand your enemy standing in the circle will be taking void damage every second. And a really nice thing to do is while standing in the circle do a bunch of medium jumps and because of the perks we have selected we and other allies in the circle each jump will be getting 15 plus stamina. So this will give us the ability to dodge more enemy attacks and gain more stamina at the same time. So then for the second ability we have the petrifying scream which when using will unleash a void scream and this will stagger and root enemies in front of you. And then lastly we have the third ability called the orb of decay and you can fire this orb which can go through your enemies and each enemy that it hits it will deal decent damage and reduce their damage absorption. And then later that orb will come back and heal your nearby teammates and yourself. And lastly if you hold the right mouse button you can regenerate more mana but in exchange your health will go down. This is for sure the only build that I would recommend to use this mechanic. So if you are standing in your own healing circle and you really need more mana and your mana potions are on cooldown then hold the left mouse button for a second or two and you should be good to go. So then for the second weapon we have the life staff and your Q ability is called the sacred ground which you have to point and select the area you want to place it in and then cast it for a split second. Then the R ability is called the lights embrace and it basically works the same way just for a single target and you can heal yourself by holding the control button and activating the spell and lastly we have the f ability called the beacon which you can aim and it places a huge circle on the ground and if you target a player you can attach the spell to him specifically so this build's main objective is to heal your nearby teammates but at the same time support them with extra damage increase so the way you want to use this build is first of all use your life staff and use all the three healing spells i prefer to use the beacon and then the lights 
and brace ability. In this way my healing is increased. And with the low lights and brace cooldown I can spam it every 2-3 seconds. And on grouped up teammates I use the sacred ground ability. And when your teammates as well call out to give them extra damage then switch to the void gauntlet and use the oblivion spell. And then give them extra damage. And when usually my life staff abilities are on cooldown I usually use the petrifying scream first and then the orb of decay. And this will root your enemies in front of you and heal myself and nearby teammates. So in general my suggestion is to use the life staff for auto attack in PvE mobs or enemy players. And then to support your teammates or yourself use the healing spells and then switch to the void gauntlet for only abilities because the life staff's damage is a lot higher. So when you're done with it switch back to the life staff and that's about it. So then for my last and final conclusions for this build. This void gauntlet and life staff weapon combination is very good and it is definitely the new meta for healers. And then lastly for the void gauntlet and life staff you want to use the diamond gems. And for all of your gear, rings, amulets and everything else use the moonstone gems because especially for healers observation to slash damage is very useful so in a quick summary if you're looking to try out and play the new void gauntlet and you want to deal damage but at the same time support the rest of your teammates then this is the best hybrid healer build for you so have fun So now for my last and final build we are using the rapier and fire staff and these are the attributes you want to have. And no matter from which level you start using this build you first of all want to get your intelligence to 150 and then get 100 points in constitution. And around level 60 you should have 300 intelligence and 150 constitution. And lastly for your gear you want to go again with being in the light category. Which means using the best setup aka one medium chest piece and then all the other light equipment. So then moving over to the first weapon which is the fire staff. And these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock both these two perks and then get the first ability called fireball. And from here let's move over to the right side and get this one perk. And then unlock the second ability called Incinerate and then get these 4 perks. Then lastly unlock the last third ability called Burnout and then get these 3 perks and that's it. Now from this point and onwards you're feel free to pick and choose which perks you want to unlock next. So then let's go over to the second weapon which is the Rapier. And these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock right up from the start both these two abilities called the Evade and Repost. And then afterwards unlock both these two perks. Then lastly get the third ability called the Fleech and then these three perks. And now let's take a closer look at the left side and get these two perks. And now from this point you're feel free to spend your points in whatever order you want. Okay so now let's go over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build. So first of all the fire staff and the Q ability aka burnout is a big dash spell which you can use for mobility or if you hit enemies while dashing they will take extra burn damage. Then the R ability is called incinerate and when you use it it creates a fiery explosion around you which deals damage, inflicts burn effect and causes enemies to get pushed back for 3 meters. And then lastly we have the F ability called fireball which is very powerful damage spell and as it is an AOE spell spell you don't have to hit directly an enemy. You can just aim it at the ground where the target is standing on and it will damage him as well. So now let's move over to the second weapon which is the rapier and the first Q spell is called evade which by activating makes you invulnerable for a split second and it can be good in dodging enemy attacks but you have to know how to use it. So then again we have the second ability called repost and it is a reflect which means that when you activate it the incoming damage from the enemy to you will come back to him. So if he activates any abilities on you instead of you getting hit he will hit himself. And lastly we have the Fleech ability which deals damage and provides a small but nice dash spell. Ok so the best way to attack a player is to always try to keep your distance. So always from the enemy be at least 4 to 5 meters. So what you want to do is from the range use your auto attacks and activate the fireball and keep on using the light dodge rolls for 50% increased damage. And then when the enemy gets close to you dash into him with the burnout ability. And then switch to the rapier and first of all use the repost ability and reflect in attack. Then when that is done use your fleech ability and create more distance from him. So while he tries to catch up to you switch to the fire staff and try to finish him off. Or if that is not enough go back to the rapier and use the evade and auto attacks and that should do the job. Again like in the first build you want to use the fire staff for range attacks and then switch to the rapier for close combat and that's about it. So now for my last and final conclusions for this build. This fire staff and rapier weapon combination right now is super strong and has very high damage capability and with the spells we have selected we make this build work very well in PvE, 1 vs 1s and 50v50 wars. Then lastly for the fire staff you want to use the opal gem 
then for the rapier get the aquamarine gem and then for all of your gear use the diamond gems and to just quickly explain the rapier gem choice so what we did we spent all our points in intelligence so to make the rapier deal more damage which usually works with dexterity but by using the converter gem we make the weapon now work with intelligence instead of dexterity so in a quick summary if you're looking for high skill build that requires a bit more practice but is very good then this is the build for you so like per usual don't forget to have fun and that's about it so i really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and i hope you enjoyed it if you have any suggestions feedback or other good meta builds that you would like to see in the next video then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below and while you're doing that please click like subscribe and enable that notification bell so this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me with all this said you have an amazing day and i'll catch you in my next video so take it easy peace